Um, first of all, just to kind of address the, the naming of the new number 12, um, obviously really important tradition here at Texas A&M and took a lot of thought into that. And, and basically the process that we went through was we narrowed it down to four finalists. We offered a vote to the team. Uh, team got to select one, and, and as you saw yesterday, Nana Bodhi Awusu was named the new number 12, and so really excited for him. That's a huge honor. Uh, means an awful lot to him. You should have seen the smile on his face all night last night at practice when he got to wear that jersey. You couldn't take it off of him. And But also want to shout out the other three finalists, and those were uh, Randy Bond, Anthony Denota, and Jacob Graham, and, and each one of those three would also have been extremely deserving recipients of it. And so uh, a really special thing, a really good night for us, and was glad to kind of get that out there. In terms of the team, you know, it's it's four, five practices in now, and so we were able to get into shoulder pads the last three days, uh, start to get a little bit more physical, but uh, certainly still way early in this thing and way early in camp. And so uh, before we get into, like, uh, asking all the questions about these final resolutions that everybody's looking for, we're not quite there yet. So I'll just kind of cut those off at the head. But uh, it's been a good five practices. I think we've started to learn how to go with the pace and the tempo that we want to. Uh, like everyone, there's a lot of areas we got to get better and get cleaned up and get fixed. And, you know, as a coach, that's really where all my focus goes to. It doesn't really go to many of the positives this time of year. But, um, you know, excited with where we are, excited with the progress and kind of open it up for questions. Down front, Brent. So what was it about your new 12th man that he was able to, to be voted and, you know, just if you wouldn't mind, speak to his qualities? Yeah, I, I mean, you'd have to ask the team specifically on what they saw that differentiated him. I think the reason why we nominated him, uh, I think there's an unbelievable work ethic in him. I think he's uh, a tremendous teammate. I think you see that, you know, the things that he's been willing to do for the program since he's been here. Uh, he's been on scout team. He's played multiple positions. Uh, he's a huge factor on special teams. We feel like he's going to be a big factor on special teams for us this year, which is obviously another huge benefit of, of jersey number 12. You know, it's really cool when he's out there and involved on the special teams part of things. And so uh, I think it's probably all of that. I think he fits the, the culture and, and selfless service that this university kind of wants in that jersey number. With everything going on in college football in the offseason, I know it doesn't really end for you, but how nice is it to have to have it back to the basics, back to football, and be able to kind of focus on that as well? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like kind of chuckling a little bit because it seems to never still end. You know, you still got a bunch of other things obviously circulating around, and there's still a lot of other things that we're trying to, to stay focused on too outside of just football. But, um, yeah, it's it, what it's nice is it's nice to get out in the grass, and it's nice um, – we're in a really good place as a program, and that's always fun. You know, when the kids are excited, when um, they have good energy, when you can see them kind of coming together, like when you're in that place, it's a really cool place to be, and uh, you don't get to live there forever, right? And, and we're there right now, and so certainly want to enjoy it while we're, while we're able to be there. Front left, Mark. Uh, Mike, you said last week that you went into camp pretty much injury-free weekend are you still a pretty injury free yeah yeah we we really haven't had anything we've had a couple a guy miss a practice here or there but no I, I think and you guys are out there you see that that group that's kind of over there doing their work on the side it's it's an extremely small group um so it's it's been good so far second row right david like we got to talk to Shamar Stewart yesterday. He looks like a different person, even though he always was a big dude. Um, just talk about where his game has kind of grown since you've been on campus. Yeah, I, I think he um, he's really learned how to strain to an even higher level. You know, he's, he's always played hard. He's always been extremely athletic. I mean, that was all the way back to when I was here and we were just bringing him on campus as a recruit. Uh, I think maybe what he's he's tried to focus on this offseason is how to take that next step uh, to become an extremely productive player, right? Not just a big, long, athletic player, but also a really productive player. And, and that gap is, is like this, but it takes an immense amount of work to close that, that little space. And so it's been cool to see him from where kind of winter workouts started um, to, to really find in some different spots within him that he could elevate and push through some things when they got hard. And, and I think as he's done that, he's really enjoyed it. Uh, and I think he's seen it kind of help him and affect him and saw it in spring ball with his game, how it had improved his game, and then went out in the summer and, and really attacked it. Uh, and so I think through five practices, you know, obviously, you know, we've said it. I mean, we got two really good defensive ends. Second row on the left, Alex, and then down front. We talked with Chase yesterday. He said you guys talked about pizza and bagels uh, back when you first got hired about him staying, you know. 
how do you think maybe the personal connections helped in getting him to stay and just how you've seen from him moving into guard? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't. Personal connections are good. I, I think, um, you know, him like so many of our kids. You know, when there's when there's so much transition, um, everyone's uncertain, right? And, and Chase is a kid that uh, came down here, you know, thinking it was going to be something and playing for a certain group, and then all of a sudden he wasn't, and so then it was I got to go, uh, and then we were just kind of able to to say, hey, listen, like you picked this for a reason, bigger than maybe just who the coach was or, or any of those things. And um, and so that part helped. Obviously, I think the Jersey connection helps in terms of, you know, you when you get into that process, you got about 48 hours to build relationships, right? And I had never met Chase in my life. And so I think the Jersey connection maybe helps in that 48 hours of, of trying to gain it. But um, no, obviously, we're really excited. And then, and then um, yeah, as a guard, I think he's extremely physical. I think he's got the ability to get under people's pads and really drive them. Uh, he's really athletic. Uh, we, we can pull him, we can move him. And so, yeah, we think he's a plus player for us, for sure, up front. Front right, Travis, and to the left, Jacob. Yeah, Coach, uh, I know Connor did the Manning Passing Academy. Well, what does a quarterback usually take from that, and it, how are they changed coming back from something like that? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, first of all, you get a chance to spend a couple of days with the Mannings, right, and, and who hasn't done – quarterbacking in an elite level like that family and so you know anytime he get, you get an opportunity to get into that type of environment and learn from um, you know whether it's whether it's uh, Peyton whether it's Eli whether it's Archie like that's an unbelievable trend of quarterbacks and so um, that's a big piece of it then you surround yourself with all of the top quarterbacks in the country and so you get to kind of see from a competition standpoint, from a work ethic standpoint, from a mindset standpoint, you get to spend a lot of time with all of those guys. And so you know, you're really exposing yourself to the best of the best for the most part. And so I think any time our kids have gotten a chance to do that, you want to allow them to take advantage of it. How do you like the competition in the defensive secondary so far? Um, yeah, it's good. I, you know, it, it's it's probably not a lot different today as I stand here than it was when we started this thing. But but again, I, I, I feel like I feel I, I think we have enough pieces, enough versatility back there. Um, it's been good to see Des Ricks get out there. Uh, we didn't get to see him much in the spring. That's been been good. Uh, it's been good to add Terry into the mix. That's been good. Um, you know, and then I think the rest of that group has taken the necessary step forward. And so um, it is. It's going to be a really intense competition. Or grow on the left, Jacob. Coach, uh, have you had time during practice so far to uh, experiment with in helmet communication? And are you learning anything about how you want to use that, how much you want to use that? Yeah, I think that's that's obviously the, the big challenge. Um, it's that and the sideline technology. And so we're trying to get as many shots at that as we can. And so, um, you know, in, in a really interesting thing, we, we didn't have enough headsets to work everything in the spring. And so we, we kind of work specifically just with the quarterbacks. And now, in fall camp, we've been able to work with the quarterbacks and with the defensive players. And so I think that's been good. I think, um, you know, trying to figure out where the comfort level for each kid is uh, in terms of what he wants to hear, what are the information we can give him that can help him, uh, what is too much, you know, what paralyzes him. And again, I, I think so much of that is on an individual basis. And so it's been good for, for Colin and Jay to be able to, to get with those guys and, and go through like, okay, I'm giving you this. Is this enough? Do you need more? What else do you want me to tell you? Uh, and so we're doing that every period of every practice so that we can get as much work as that we can. And then we are talking about leaders on this team. Uh, when you have, you're bringing in transfers who are you know, veterans who are leaders on the teams they were at previously, and then guys who are returning, guys who you know, went through a whole season last year. How do you notice those guys gelling, and, and what are you looking for to really stand out? Yeah, I, I think, again, it, just, it goes back to how you have to, to kind of go through your off offseason. Uh, I think you have to be – much more intentional nowadays about how you bring people together within your program. And, and that's something that is just, uh, it's just something that's really important. And so like in the past, in the summer, you would say, hey, like, uh, you know, Coach Cushing, why don't you bring the O-line over your house? But but really now it's more like, hey, Coach Cushing, why don't you grab a defensive coach that you haven't spent much time with? And why don't you grab 12 kids across a whole bunch of different positions? 
and bring them together because those 12 kids haven't spent a bunch of time with, uh, you know, and so you, you do it a little bit differently. Um, you know, we did a couple things event wise this summer that I thought were good getting the kids together. We'll probably do a couple more here during camp. Um, we're doing some stuff in our team meetings at night uh, to try to get some kids up and let them talk about their story and kind of tell their history and who they are. Uh, you know, just, I think you have to, be very intentional about those things and understand that you have a lot of people in that locker room that have never played together and and you've got to kind of form that before we run out of the tunnel for the first time second row on the right carter hey mike uh what benefits do you think you'll see from having maybe a bigger group of tight ends and uh and in, with donovan green in particular what benefits do you think from his weight game you'll weight gain do you think you'll see this season? Yeah, I think um, obviously in the ability to, to kind of set edges in the run game, it's important. I, I, obviously, it's been well documented how big the defensive lines are in this league, and, and this is big boy football. And so, um, you know, it's hard to be a tight end who can set the edge in the run game if, if you're undersized. And so I think from that perspective, the weight gain has been good. Um, obviously, I don't think they've lost anything from their ability to run routes and get open and be able to utilize them in the passing game. And, and so that part is good. And then, you know, just specifically as it pertains to Donovan, it's it's just been good to see him uh, get better. It's almost like, uh, you know, he's going to get mad at me when I say this, but it's like watching a freshman when you come back from that injury, right? Because, like, it's it's so rusty, you know, because he's still learning how to run all these movements. But then, because he's such a great kid and he's such a hard worker, the growth and the development that he makes every practice is like a young kid because he's just getting back into it. And so, um, you know, we talk kind of every day during stretch about just kind of where he's at. And, and he's feeling good. He's feeling confident. He gets more confident every day. And so, um, it's just good to get him back into to where he used to be and playing ball to be able to help this team. And with the Will linebacker stop, spot, what have you seen from that during preseason camp so far? Yeah, again, very similar. You know, I think I think Scooby Williams is is a really talented player. I think he's got the ability to to really help us there. Damian Sanford is a kid who who's very comfortable in our system, uh, has really shown the ability to to kind of take it to the next level. And then I think Solomon DeShields is is a little bit of the wild card because he hasn't played in this system a lot. And so um, he's starting to get comfortable. He had a really good night last night, made a bunch of plays last night, and, and that was really the first time he had gotten his feet underneath him. And so he had been an athletic linebacker that can run and hit. And then last night it started to really click for him system-wise. And so um, you know, it'd be interesting to see how that continues to develop here over the next week or so. Front left, Cease. Mike, a couple programs are having open uh, practice and charging admission and even charging for autographs after. Has a &M talked about that? Would you be opposed to something like that? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I want to turn it into like an NIL session. So I, I think the idea of charging money for autographs and those types of things, that, that's not really something that's on our radar. I think in terms of open practices, um, I think we're trying to provide the access that we think fits being a first year program. And, um, you know, as we start to kind of bring our stuff together and do our stuff, we're trying to give as much access as we can without... Um, you know, crossing some lines that we think could potentially put us at a competitive disadvantage. Coach, back behind the lights in the middle, Tyler. Coach, with your um, first scrimmage coming up, what are you hoping to, to get out of that? And are there any sort of kind of uh, benchmarks at this point of, of ball camp that you're, that you're looking for specifically? Yeah, uh, you know, from a benchmark standpoint, you know, we don't look at the scrimmage to be much different than practice. And so I think one of the things we tr truly try to instill is, you know, we want to practice at a game tempo at all times and everybody says that but like we truly grade it that way and so we have a, a winning formula for each side of the ball we have an offensive formula we have a defensive formula we have a special teams formula and that's kind of what we focus on when we grade practice and so you know we want to play winning football in every aspect of the game every time we go on the field and um, you know that's a myriad of things from from effort to execution to assignments to playing hard to making explosive plays to not allowing explosive plays to catching return you know catching balls clean to, right, there's just a lot of things that go into that but um, and so what you want to see when you go into a scrimmage is, OK, well, now we're in the stadium. Now we're operating inside of Kyle Field. Um, now can we do it in, a, in that type of setting the same way? But if, if we're doing our job from a preparation standpoint, you know, we don't have a lot of coaches on the field during team periods. We're not coaching. 
during the play very much. We're not telling guys what to do. Like we run a game operation from practice one all the way through. And so from that perspective, we hope there's not this massive transition in the scrimmage of this being a whole new operation. Um, but I think it is different the first time you get into Kyle Field uh, and now all of a sudden you still got to perform in that environment.